Good morning everybody and welcome to this game between Virtus Pro and Team Adfinam for the Summit 6. This game has a sniper in it and that's why I'm casting it. No, I really like Sniper. I actually think Sniper is a very good hero and um, I'm excited to see a game with a sniper in it and that's legit why I wanted, wanted to cast this game. Anyhow, I'm also still doing my I cast a day thing, which in case you don't know this, but I am always recording a cast every single day. I'm not saying I'm uploading all of them because I'm not, but I'm trying my best to do as many as I can. And hopefully I'm improving thanks to that, and I think I am. And uh, yeah, it's just practice. I'm trying to get good. And uh, our feedback is always appreciated, of course. So anyhow, uh, we got bands. Should actually maybe slow this down a little bit so we actually get a time, get a little bit of time to talk about the drafting. It went by rather quickly. Team Adfinam using almost none of their reserve time, which is a little bit unusual. So we got the IO Oracle, Faces Void, Sanking, and Slark ban for Virtus Pro, and then Draw Ranger, Enchantress, Ogre Magi, Slaughter, and Luna for Team Adfinam. I don't think anybody here sticks out as a crazy out of the blue ban, right? These are all just really solid heroes and uh, not too surprised to see them banned out. As per picks, we got Outward Devourer. Even despite the nerf, he's still being picked up. We got Shadow Demon and Sniper for the Diaden and then the Mirana. Nux Assassin, Ancient Apparition, Earthshake and Beastmaster. So uh, we got Virtus Pro looking at a really solid draft in terms of um, laning uh, the safe lane and the off lane. Only thing they're missing is a mid. Invoker, of course, still in the pool, right? I always bring it up, but Invoker's very good. Death Prophet would be another hero. Um, although I don't really see Death Prophet being super fantastic in this. It's going to be the Juggernaut. So it's actually the Sniper for the mid and the Juggernaut for the safe lane. That makes sense too, right? I'm not too surprised to see that either. Weaver coming out for Team Adfinam. I actually really like Weaver with Ancient Apparition. Those two heroes go very well together. You can apply the Ancient Appar Appar Apparition Chilling Touch to the Weaver. And of course, he's got the Gemini attack. So you get two very quick attacks out and that hurts. Early game... That, that is very powerful. Uh, Ancient Apparition is actually the single best level 1 fighting hero. I mean, apart from maybe Mirana if you get a 5 second stun, but that's very situational, right? But like, given a hundred situations in a hundred different games with all of the, uh, with all the heroes in them, whatever, whatever, you know what? Overall, Ancient Apparition is gonna come out ahead just because Chilling Touch is so powerful in the early stages of the game. And having Viva a hero that can really abuse that is actually quite scary. And, uh, of course, Nyx is going to be the offlane, OD taking mid, and the Mirana AA supporting. Could also be the Mirana as the offlane, right? Don't want to rule that out, but I would be surprised if it's down. And then, uh, this is, by the way, game four. This is uh, the finals of something. I don't really do too much research into that. <laughs> I just want to cast games, you know. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and say this, right? Like, if there was actually any pressure on me to do that kind of research, I would... And I would definitely know a lot more about the teams and about the tournaments and all of that. But the thing is, right now I'm just doing this as something that I really want to do. Not so much as something where I really get anything out of it. Because my, like the casts on YouTube, they don't get enough views for me to really like treat them as full, proper videos, you know. Um, it's really more of an extra for... Oh, I don't even know who that is. Okay. But it's really more... Oh no, it's purple. He changed his picture and shit. But... <laughs> but... It's really more something I do for me, right? And for the few people that want to, to watch the casts. But overall, it doesn't really have like a huge monetary incentive or something like that. So, um, or any really, like strictly speaking, if I wanted to make money, I would be better off investing my time into something else. But that's not the point. I want to do this to get good. I want to do this to practice. And I want to do this because I'm hoping that one day I'll actually be able to cast a proper match at a proper tournament. And in those in that hypothetical scenario, I would absolutely know a lot more about the teams and the tournament and the scenarios and the drafts and all of that. But uh, right now, I just don't have the time for the research. Is that okay? Does that make sense? Just wanted to let you guys know, this is a very calm early stage here anyway. Doesn't seem like anybody's too keen on fighting. I'm not too surprised by that, Virtus Pro. Yes, they do have the Juggernaut, but uh, honestly, I personally value the Ancient Apparition more in this early fighting than uh, I value a Juggernaut. So... Uh, I'm not too surprised that Virtus Pro is just kind of dodging in. Actually, nobody going for this. Wait, what is happening here? Really, the bounty rune is just gonna be there. I can't believe this is actually happening right now. 
This is such a scrubby thing to do. I mean, whoever is scrubbing the dishes really needs to come over here because we need the master scrubs for these, <laughs> for these plays. What is going on? All right, anyhow. So we got no one on the sniper in the mid. Uh, just gonna be laning against OD here. Of course, OD recently got nerfed, losing six base damage, and that's pretty big. Six base damage definitely matters, and I think that might be why they 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 think a sniper can handle this, right? One of the biggest weaknesses, well, actually, I would argue one of the only weaknesses sniper has during the laning stage, is his very low base damage. And now OD has less damage himself, so it's not as much of a disparity anymore, right? I mean, it's still like what is it? Uh, he has 61, he has 48 or so 13. I mean, that's still significant, but. It's not as bad as it used to be, so, you know, you, you get the idea there. Oh, Lil, actually, you know what, they they see this. Yeah, they absolutely see this. Earthshaker, do they have the trap? Yup, they get the trap, now they gotta time this properly. Arrow's gonna fly, that is too early, that is far too early. Alright, Lil is gonna be able to escape just fine, and the Earthshaker is gonna be trotting out of there. Now, at the top lane, we got Solo on the Shadow Demon, currently kind of fighting it out a little bit with Skylark Pulse. No, wait, I guess it Pulse is their sponsor, so Skylark. <laughs> Skylark on the Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin, we got Ramses 666 farming the safe lane on the Juggernaut. Uh, also, we got a S -S Spartan. Spartan on the Mirana. Got these names. Saj Spartan on the Mirana, kind of... Coming top, you know, maybe hoping for a lucky arrow. Maybe we can get something done. Probably not, but there's always the dream, right? Like, this is the reason why the Mirana's here. She doesn't think she will get a kill. No, no, no. Their belief isn't that strong. But she might. And and that's enough. Well, you know what? If you only have a 5% chance to make this arrow work, well, you just gotta try 20 times. Right? You just haven't gotten the 5% yet. That's, that's all that means. It doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. It just means you gotta try a few times. Also, we got a double damage on the Earthshaker here. Um, I don't know. They are definitely just... They definitely just got the Earthshaker here to kind of like... Oh, wait. What is Fog doing? He's going in deep. Now, he does have backup. Arrow not going to connect. Goes on the creep. And now Lil is just gonna be <laughs> beating up OD. Down he goes. The double damage is too much to handle. Even though it's just to support Earthshaker. With the double damage, anybody deals... Deals a lot of damage. Actually, funny thing is that Urshika with the double damage deals about as much damage as a tree and protector without. <laughs> it's just ridiculous if you think about it. At the bottom, we got Madara on the Viva and maybe next time on the, the Ancient Apparition. Also, I'm sorry, we actually got Skylark getting a kill at the top. Spartan, I suppose, managed to connect with one of those arrows finally. But again, look, we have seen four arrows this game. Only one of them did something, but at the same time, got a kill right that's what matters did you get a kill yes all right fantastic did we miss three of them and they got really nothing done yes does that matter though right like did that result in anything bad actually did the mirana just died here and then we got the od going down in the mid but we're just gonna disregard that <laughs> and od just walking in gonna be trapping up the sniper yet again arrow no, you really gotta be precise with those timings. I mean, it's hard. It is hard. It's actually funny because the ODs, Astral and Prisman last for so long, right? It's a four second duration. That is very long. Um, it becomes harder to time the arrow. Because now with four seconds duration, you kind of lose your sense of time. Like, I personally think it is very easy to time something to be one second accurate, maybe two seconds, right? That is, that is easy. That is perfectly doable. But the higher you go in that, right, the more time you add to your timer, uh, the more difficult it becomes to actually get that prediction, you know, to get that feel for when you're going to get the timing right. Uh, also, Viva <laughs> diving a little bit deep here. Uh, of course, this is kind of to be expected. You want to be applying pressure. And, uh, and Beastmaster can't really do much in the laning, laning stage. I wouldn't sit there and hope that the dog and the bird, you know, keep him safe. But Pasha on the Beastmaster here, he doesn't really have the tools to defend his tower. And in that scenario, you know, why not get it? Well, right, let's just take it down really quick. Viva, of course, going for the Lincolns. Lincoln's gonna be very powerful here. You're gonna be blocking Roar. Uh, not really Juggernaut Ultimate, but I guess a slash of the Juggernaut Ultimate. You're gonna be blocking Assassinate. Uh, maybe maybe the, the Shadow Demon Ultimate or the Disruption. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can actually 
uh, you know, I can actually get rid of with a Lincolns and all of that is quite valuable, right? So I, I like the Lincolns pickup here. I think that's going to be pretty damn neat. I also wonder if we're going to see the, the Hand of Midas on the Ancient Apparition, you know? Um, it's always always an interesting question because with this hero, you really you really uh, can go for that Hand of Midas early on. And by early on, I mean at like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that, just as your first big item. And then you go into the Aghanims, which allows you to make sure you get that Aghanims. Now, now, the thing about that is, right, like, that way you guarantee you get it. And if the game takes long, then you have this insanely powerful ability, right? AA Ultimate is bonkers. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, those are really not, not quite on point. Bit of a shame, but uh, she did actually manage to get Mana Boots anyhow. I mean, that's actually quite impressive. Really, Mana Boots on the Mirana here. Uh, still, you know the the thing is just you uh, you gotta make you gotta ask yourself the question: Is the ancient apparition gonna be needed in the late game, right? Or, or, or are we gonna be finishing the game earlier, right? Like, is is this what, what are we what are we going for here? What is the plan? When do we want to finish? And I think looking at Ad Finam, they wouldn't. Oh God, there's so much happening right now. Oh, Shadow Demon also. You know what? Let me actually skip back on that one. I, j I just got tripped out by the top because there's the Nyx Assassin being jumped and then in the mid, the Sniper. I think this is where we see an arrow connect. So we got, there we go, Nyx Assassin going down. No one gets trapped up and this time they're going to get it. Arrow flies and finally they connect with it. Sniper is dead, guaranteed. Question now is what else can they do? Solo coming in. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. Do they have an ultimate? No. A trap would have done it too, but sadly it doesn't seem like fuck was in range for that. Arrow flies into nothingness. That's never going to connect. <laughs> and uh, Solo will be fine. Oh man, sorry for missing those two kills right there. It's just, it's a little bit tricky, right? Like there's a fight up top, so you're like, oh god, oh wait, there's another thing happening in the mid. Oh well, we got a smoke coming out. Beastmaster, Pasha, gonna be heading into the mid here. He's kind of sneaking about the place looking for something. Being quiet, being, being cheeky, uh, hiding behind that tree again. This seems to be a very popular hiding spot, this game. And a Spartan now runs into him. The roar comes out! Do they have an assassinate? Yup. That should be plenty to secure the kill. Actually, nope. That is enough to secure the kill. I just thought that Fuck may have gone in and interrupted the sniper, but no, he's just farming creeps, which is definitely the better idea. <laughs> So OD just gonna be over here chilling, taking down a few jungle camps and then heading back into the base. Uh, I wonder what we're gonna see here, right? Uh, usually on Shadow, uh, not Shadow Demon, uh, Outward Devourer, it's talking about Shadow Demon. How? How? The Weaver. The Bug, I guess. Alright. <laughs> I thought he was safe. <laughs> Alright. Lil. Oh, actually, no one taking quite a bit of damage here. He's running, though, and he's gonna be fine for the time being. Weaver chases him down. He does have the the swarm, and it connects on two, actually. None. No one still on the run. He will go down. Now, Pasha also has the bug on him. He really gotta deal with that. Yup. Gets rid of it in the meantime. Over here, we got Ramses going in on Spartan, spinning on him. Stun connects as well, and the Mirana falls. But Urshaker goes down on return. Now Skylark looking for something else. No, he's just kind of trying to retreat himself out of there. But now Madara working on Solo, the Shadow Demon. You're gonna be taking to the Shadow Realm in a second. Uh, Viva's still going. He's not afraid to go into the tower. One attack. Nope, not enough. The magic stick keeping him going in the meantime. Nux Assassin falls, Shadow Demon does actually end up going down as well. Now it's just Madara up here and he's caught out. He's got enough mana for two more Shikuchis, but the war connects! Now they really gotta get, gotta get lucky here, or gotta be quick, or gotta assassinate him. They choose the last sniper, eats an arrow for it, but Madara still falls. And that was a long fight with a lot of people dying, and I'm very unsure who came out ahead, because I have no idea. Who died to who? I, that was <laughs> that was a lot of fighting there. All right. Well, so uh, I guess the Weaver, by the way, going for Dragonlance first. So skipping out on the early Lincolns, which I like that. I I always think rushing Lincolns is a little 
I don't know. Oh no, Skylark, you gotta connect with those. Arrow also misses, and now the Nux kind of caught out a little bit. They get the shrapnel, they get the slow from the dog even, and assassinate, not necessary at all. No one gonna save himself the mana, and the Nux goes down. But as I was saying, right, like the thing is just. I always, like, whenever, whenever I see an early Lincolns, I'm like, okay, I get why. Right? Like, you kind of, you want the Lincolns here, because Lincolns is, like, super fucking sick. Alright? Good item, this game. My problem with getting it right away is always, well, the region is useful, but, I mean, early on, right, it doesn't really add any fighting potential. It doesn't really give you any power. Now you have an item that keeps you alive, but what is even a point of keeping you alive if you can't kill anything? This is where the Dragon Lance comes in. Now, the Dragon Lance, of course, doesn't give a huge amount of fighting potential, but it's a decent amount. Right? It's good enough in my book, absolutely. I feel like I feel like a Weaver with a Dragon Lance is so much more dangerous than a Weaver without it. So, just going for the Casual Dragon Lance and then heading into the Lincolns is a build that I personally like a lot, lot more. I think that's actually a fantastic choice here, and I feel we're going to see great results from Madara um, because of it. Uh, we got a TP in from the Shadow Demon, but I actually got a lot of heroes there. Oh, that misses. They're gonna throw out a Fisher. Oh, nice! Beautiful time lapse right there. Not using it for heals, but using it for positioning. And Madara will be able to escape. Very smart. Very, very aware of what was happening. I like that play a lot. A lot of other players wouldn't have done that, right? A lot of lower player, a lower skill level players definitely would have just kept running. But Madara knows that. Time lapse not only does it heal me, but it also gets me in to where I was before. And I just traveled a lot of distance in those five seconds. So let me just go ahead and go back and trick him that way. It's similar, like similar to a puck throwing out his orb and just not teleporting there. I love those kind of plays. We got a smoke. We're just pro looking for something. The trademark Russian aggression. Alright, they're heading into. The dire top lane, putting down a sentry. Oh, Weaver, he's just gonna run into it! One stun, do they have a roar? Of course they do! Madara taking some... They... Oh no, oh no, that was a mistake. Wait, was it? No, it wasn't. Alright, good. <laughs> Alright, I was a little bit worried he was gonna be able to time-lapse out of the disruption there, but... No, they managed to secure him, they get him with the Shadow Poison there, and uh, the Weaver goes down, so... Solo, I'm sorry. No mistakes from you, of course. Ramses is now going to be pushing a top lane, needing to charge. Of course, we've got Pasha and Solo here as well. That should be a pretty dead tower. Well, I don't really see any way how this survives. There's no support, no backup. Ancient Apparition going for the Hand of Minus, and that is a very early Hand of Minus. Look at this guy. So it will be the Hand of Minus, and then probably some boots or something, and then the Agonims, as you would expect. So the, the thing about Hand of Minus... Uh, the important part about that item is really that it gives you reliable gold, right? That is what matters. And the reliable gold aspect of it just cannot be talked about enough, I think. The Hand of Minus on AA isn't meant to accelerate your farm. It's not meant to give you, you know, crazy items in the late game. No, what it is supposed to do is make sure you get reliable gold. That is the whole point. Make sure you get reliable gold. Now, if you look at this down here, you can see we have reliable gold 600 and unreliable gold two, uh, 240. Now, what the AA will be doing this game is um, the AA will be managing his reliable gold. Oh, fuck, actually going to be going down here. Ooh. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with Ad Finam. That was a deep dive for really nothing at all. But, uh, yeah, well, well, you can see that... Maybe not right now, because right now he's still trying to just get his um, his treads, which is reasonable. But what you do is you make sure whenever you're buying an item, you're spending unreliable gold to do so, while you're saving up your reliable gold for the more expensive parts of your items, right? So, for example, with AA, what you want to do is you have a 1200 gold and then free 1000 gold item. Items you buy those. Oh, <laughs> Spartan! He goes down. I mean, the A blast connects, but there's really no response other than that around. So, yeah. Still, uh, you continue buying your cheaper items, 
with the unreliable gold that you just get from the passive gold tick or from hitting creeps here and there and then you save all of your reliable gold up to that bigger mark to the 1200 gold to the 1000 gold and then from there on out you can spend that money once you've gotten you know your items but you can spend it guaranteed no matter how often they kill you no matter how often you die during fights or gangs or anything because that gold is reliable they cannot take it away from you and that's the big part Ramses, oh, he's just gonna spin TP. Very, very reasonable. I mean, he was kind of in an odd spot. Fuck, uh, the old OD, he went for drums. Uh, so, this is always the thing about uh, OD. I feel like, do you go for drums or not? Right? Like, I, I personally like drums a lot, but. Yeah. So, uh, drums, and then it's gonna be the Hurricane Pike. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, definitely gonna be a four staff with the staff of Wizardry, but Hurricane Pike on OD is just such a naturally very powerful item. I don't really see why you wouldn't buy it, right? Like, it's it's just really, really good. Uh, we got the Mirana Inverse. Oh, they still get scouted out, though. The Disruption comes out, connects on Spartan. They also get a Stun Shrapnel dealing a little bit of damage. She's gonna be fine, though. Honestly, not even really close to dying here. In the meantime, over there, Ice Blast gonna be flying, connects on nothing. Oh, impressive. <laughs> OD gets uh, low though, now Pasha is on the run, he's very low, he knows he's done, he's just gonna sacrifice himself, arrow, oh nice, solo will go down, will go down as well, picked off thanks to Spartan, hitting uh, a beautiful arrow actually, that was very well done, very well done, and seems they are looking at Roshan now, I mean, getting a few hits in, but comes up, so, I mean, that's, Gonna be dealing a little bit of damage, you know, reducing his armor and all of that. That's pretty, pretty important. So they should be able to get Roshana, actually. Yeah, I mean, he's already almost dead. Lil is here. He doesn't have a blink dagger at all. Omni slash used gets the Nux Assassin. And none is sitting in the background. He's hasted. Um, we're still pretty low. Spartan is dead. We're actually losing a lot of heroes here. Roshan is still alive. Goes, finally goes down. Madara. Picks up the edges. Now it's gonna be fuck going down. Madara, he's on the run, uses the time lapse. Trapped up by the disruption. There's plenty of detection around. There's four heroes down. The resurrection now from the Viva stunned up immediately. Roared and. Oh, they lose him twice. Yeah, that was definitely not worth it. Definitely not. Maybe next time stays alive. Not really sure if he did that through being in the fight or being out of it. <laughs> Seems like he was just chilling down here, so... Yeah, the ancient apparition. So wise. In the most cheeky way imaginable. Gonna be throwing down an uh, Ice Blast. Hitting the creep wave. Yeah. Doesn't really do much, of course, but... I guess makes farming for the Mirana a little bit easier. Oh, well, she's also working on her Aghanims. Which got nerfed again. So I don't really like what the Mirana did right there. You know, like, to me it was very obvious that the creeps weren't gonna die from a starstorm. Because if you want to kill creep waves with two, uh, with, 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 um, with a 300 spell ability, they need to be at less than half HP. Alright, look at these guys, they have 574 HP. So, um, well, I guess half HP about, right? But they just had obviously more than half and the starstorm wasn't gonna be able to kill them. And uh, as such that, as such the... The Mirana then wouldn't be able to get the last hits because all of the creeps in the creep if are gonna take them. And uh, honestly, that's just missed gold, right? You just missed out on like 200 gold right there. And I, I don't personally think that's acceptable. Oh, no one. Okay, that's gonna be an arrow. Nux is also here. Oh, AA Blast. <laughs> they connect with everything. That should be a kill. Yeah, they get him. That's nice. Making sure they get that. Of course, having the Nux roaming around, that's always very annoying. Also picks up a Blink Dagger now, enabling the initiation. That's always a big deal, you know. Nux without Blink Dagger, yeah, it's, it's really hard to hit with the stun, right? Like, it's really a matter of, this is just a hard ability to hit. Uh, you see pro players miss it all the time, right? It's just really difficult. And, oh, Madara. He's dusted up, gonna time lapse back and uh, just retreat. Still, it's a hard ability to hit, you know, and man, if you also then have to walk in and just pray they line up somehow, it doesn't work. Of Blink Dagger, you can reliably get two people with the stun, which is huge. 
as very, very valuable. Similar to a Sand King in that regard. Arrow flies, not gonna connect. Very close. <laughs> Ramses almost got hit right there. Weaver now picking up the Lincolns, by the way. Um, I really want him to get some damage next. Like, just go for the Desolator, right? Desolator, I always liked on Weaver. Uh, I think it's very powerful. I don't think there's anything wrong with it this game. And um, you need some damage, and that's very cheap, very efficient damage. Odi uh, now working on either a BKB or the Dragon Lance. Probably the Dragon Lance, but it could be a BKB. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, honestly. I couldn't really tell you. And the AA, of course, you can see the point booster picked up. Just kind of, kind of getting, getting there. You know, you want to see the the ice blast max out. You want to see the ice blast with the Aghanim scepter. And maybe next time, you know what? He is just working towards it. And this is just what an AA does, right? An AA is a is a very passive hero. You don't see a lot of him. You don't see him in big team fights usually. Well, you see him, but he's not like in the front lines or he's not really trying to do anything fancy. He's just there throwing out some spells, throws in his ultimate, hoping to connect with a good one. And then he just prays he doesn't die, right? So, also at the bottom, Madara caught out again. This is just not acceptable. I mean, the Viva just keeps getting caught. And the, the thing is, these are not even fancy catches, right? They, they, aren't, they aren't catching him with anything incredible. Oh my god, no. It's Every single time, it's just a Beastmaster coming in and roaring him. And they just kill him very quickly that way. And that's a problem. Can't really have that. Mirana's now at the bottom. Yeah, they're just gonna be pushing him. Manta style on Ramses. Juggernaut with the blink dagger as well. I really like this item build, by the way. I think it's a it's a very good choice here. You know, your team is a little bit more aggressive. Yes, Sniper and Juggernaut can absolutely take it to the light game, but so can they and uh, you know, do you really want to risk it if you can just apply it? aggression early on you know like push down some buildings you're doing really well right now you know you you really um, I don't know you're really starting to snowball ahead here like I think this doesn't really do it justice because all of the momentum is on Virtus Pro side while at Finam they're just kind of playing the defensive at the moment right they're struggling to find farm it just seems like this is the point where they're starting to fall behind and yeah you can see right like even though this is is actually like a roller coaster but now this is going to start going down and this is going to keep going down until at Finam changes something about how the game is going right they gotta get some fights or they gotta get some big key items but something has to change now um the manta star diffuser build on the juggernaut I, I i really like that i think that's such a fantastic item decision here right uh the diffuser diffuser blade um it's just gonna allow him to catch up with people it's not really so much about the mana burn but of course that's handy but it's not really a big deal it's not really why you get it it's more like okay you know what we can slow people down it synergize as well with the manta star gives you some great stats and uh, it's really all you need for it to be picked up right and it's reasonably cheap Earthshaker, by the way, has the Blink Dagger. I don't think we need to talk about Earthshaker with Blink Dagger, right? Like, this is just what you get every single time. In the meantime, Sniper... God damn it, these... All of these... This is really difficult to keep track of because it's so fucking quick. <laughs> right? I'm just like, everything is fine. Oh my god, somebody is dead. Why? Oh no, okay, okay, he had, he had Inverse, yeah. But you see this? He just dies in, in a matter of, of seconds. This is incredibly difficult to keep track of. No, Madara, he's roared out and gonna be taking down here. Ooh. Even dropping the Omni Slash. I mean, who else would you use it for, though? So, honestly, like, ah, well, fuck here, let's go. Right? Like, I don't see a problem using an Omni Slash for the Viva. Odin now got his Hurricane Pike. Uh, I, you assume BKB next, Blink Dagger. All right, that makes sense, too. You know, even more mobility. The cool thing about OD is you really don't need to buy a lot of damage. You really don't. It's fine. Uh, this hero hurts so bad just naturally with the Arcane Orb. Right? And the Arcane Orb in team fights just lets you snowball super hard. Um, I don't, let's actually do a little bit of a little bit of a thought experiment, right? So 
You saw right there, Arcane Orb hit for about 120 damage. Let's say 120, right? Now, what does 120 mean? Like, is 120 a lot? And let me go ahead and tell you, 120 is a lot of damage. Let's look at the Sniper, right? Sniper has 40 normal. That leads to 47% phys 47 physical damage reduction. Um, let's go ahead and just round that up to a nice solid 50. 50%, right? So that means that in terms of physical damage, if Arcane Orb, instead of being pure, it was physical damage, it would actually have to add 240 damage to match up with how much damage it deals right now because it gets reduced by 50%. Isn't that insane? Isn't that just, oh my god, that is so much damage. That is, that is such a high number. 240. Right? Imagine if the OD's attack damage right now, instead of being 120, was 360. Wow. Right? Because that's what we're talking about with the Arcane Orb. And that's just... Well, it's not snowballed at all, right? Every single attack increases your damage because you steal the intelligence. That is how insane the spell is, right? Uh, you can see 140, right? So now we are talking uh, talking about 280. You always got to multiply it that way, right? The Juggernaut. Juggernaut has 17 armor, like 51% damage reduction, right? So if the ODE hits him, again. Like, he just hits for an actual, like, actually, he actually hits for 280 extra damage with the Arcane Orb. Like, if you kind of think about it that way, right? So if you compare it to how much damage the Juggernaut deals, then, um, you know, it doesn't really add up. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really really add up in a way that you can just look at his damage and then the, the OD's damage is just like, oh, the Juggernaut deals more. No, actually, the OD deals a significant amount more. Now, at the same time, one thing we need to keep in mind about the Juggernaut, of course, he has the Blade Dance. Blade Dance currently at level 2. So this means the Blade Dance increases his damage output by 25%. <clears throat> it's just how crits work out. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. But there's, there's, um, you can do certain, you, you can calculate how much average damage a crit adds to each attack, right? Um, so for example, Phantom Assassin crit, it's, uh, at level 3, uh, 41%. I think. Uh, I did the math on this one, so I believe it was 41%. It was a really high amount. But, uh, actually, the thing about this... This adds 25%, up to 35 It's actually super scary. It looks such a good ability. But yeah, it adds 25% um, right now. So he hits for 170, you know, and another 25% on top of that. Um, you know, like, it's another 50 or so. Right, like, it was actually pretty scary as well. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, I just like doing math like that. I think it's interesting. I think it's really, really interesting. Necrobook free, Blink Dagger, Gem of True Strike on Pasha. Uh, so that guy's just getting scary. Hurricane Pike and Maelstrom on the Sniper. So I don't really like the Hurricane Pike that much. Um, I like Hurricane Pike a lot on uh, OD and on Silence. I think they're very good there. But generally, uh, I personally prefer just getting the Dragon Lords. Right? And uh, I think especially in a game like this, I mean, there's not really anybody that's going to necessarily try to get particularly close to you, right? Uh, I mean, the Viva is a ranged hero. He's got... 560 range. Also, he's very fast. Even if you push him away, he's just gonna go invisible in closer distance anyway. And uh, then it's just, are you? Then you gotta ask yourself, well, would I buy a four star on sniper? And I'm just like, yeah, not, not really. No, I, I wouldn't. Right? But uh, that's just, just how I think about it. Uh, Nux Assassin got an Agonims now. Look at that. That's interesting. Please get Evilance just for maximum smagging. That would be amazing. Um, the Agonims is an interesting choice. This might be because they want to, like, turtle a little bit, you know, play defensive. Um, it's a it's an item that allows you to set up in a position. And I mean, and then you're kind of stuck in that position, but in that position you're very powerful. I mean, what is a better spot than to do it right here? Right, do it in your base, just keep spamming spells at your opponent, keep them away. That should buy you a lot of time. So, uh, it's an interesting choice, definitely. Um, I'm a bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not a bad item. It's a very good item. It's just not something you see every single game, right? A Mirana, very close to her Agonims. Ancient Apparition, very close to his Agonims, right? Again, just kind of working with the Hand of Midas. The, actually, you know what? The thing is, I talked about that reliable gold thing earlier. Turns out that didn't really come in at all, right? Uh, AA is not working with that at all, seeing as he hasn't died yet. <laughs> That AA just simply has not died yet for the entire game, which is actually a little bit crazy. 
That's actually just a little bit insane. Oh, <laughs> sacrificial bird. <laughs> Taking one for the team right there. And up at the top, three TPs. Yep, everybody's just gonna get themselves out of there. No one is in a bit of an awkward spot now. The arrow doesn't hit anything. Dog is gonna slow down Spartan for stuff. And, uh, well, Sniper turns around a little bit. Oh, wow, he's actually almost got the Mirana. One stun? Yeah, that's a dead Mirana. Wow, that's a little bit crazy. All right. I guess they get that kill. Lightning's coming in big time. I like lightnings. I think lightnings are very powerful. All right, so seeing that is, is pretty neat. Um, it's also just kind of like an, uh, a cheap aggressive item, I think. You know, it's kind of similar. I, I would equate it to a Desolator, right? Um, now, I don't know why he went for lightnings over Desolator. Frankly, no idea. But I don't see a problem with it, right? It's a good item, don't get me wrong. And, you know, you can upgrade it, but you can't with a Desolator. So, just that. And uh, I don't know if we're going to see the push continue here. Aghanim's now down on the AA, so that's pretty big. That's pretty important. Alright, they get the bird. Oh, look at that army of illusions. Yeah, Manta style of Shadow Demon, man. That shit is so insane. Nyx Assassin burrowed back here. Just shooting his stuff in into the mix, but... I'll just keep spamming this, honestly. Alright, I mean, why wouldn't they? That is the power of a Shadow Demon. You just... Have an endless siege with no risk. None. Not only do you have the the Manta Star, you, you have the Shadow Demon Illusions, right? But you also got the Sniper who's sitting half the map away shooting at your tower. No, that's where Desolator would be sick, but... Oh, well. Right, and this thing is almost dead. Now, of course, luckily, you do have... Oh, we're going in! Fuck! Oh, God. The OD just drops. No buyback. Nothing. Arrow flies, connects on solo. He's dead. So that's good. But I mean, you lose the barracks. It's definitely not, not a good trade. I mean, even heroes wise, it's one on one, but you just lose the barracks. Yeah, the uh, OD just goes down instantly. I mean, he's got BKB, but BKB won't help you if you can't activate it. <laughs> Oh god, that was, that was not good. In the meantime, you can see we got Madara up at the top, just kind of trying to split push a little bit, but... Uh, he doesn't really deal a crazy amount of damage yet. I mean, went for TP boots. Oh no! He's caught out, he's dead! <laughs> oh god, I feel like we have seen this many, many times this game. I mean, he's died seven times. Ramses, on the other hand, you know... Rutus Pro's position one died zero times, and this is actually something I I personally thoroughly 100% believe in, and uh, I, ho I have always believed it, and I will always believe in. Okay, maybe maybe not that, but you know, um, I would rather have my position one carry at a score of zero zero and zero than at a score of I know five three and six. I don't know, well, just some random numbers. Point being, I, I, you just get a lot more money if you don't die. Because hitting creeps is the most efficient way to get money. As lame as it sounds. That's just what you should be doing. Because that's how you get money. So dying slows you down so much. And the Weaver dying seven times is just not really not really good for Ad Phenom. And yeah, I mean, he also doesn't really have any money. Which is exactly... Exactly that, you know, like that. That is exactly why right. he just doesn't really have any item. I mean, he went for TP boots. I, I actually hate that item choice. I mean, that's saying you want to split push, but dude, your barracks in the middle are dead. I mean, you gotta have something that allows you to fight. He keeps trying to like do everything except for fighting, it seems. Um, at least right now, and it's just not gonna work out that way. I mean, you're just not gonna be able to actually take on Virtus Pro and. And this is always the thing, yeah, I mean, great, you can split push for days and, uh, man, those creeps fear you. But in the end, Witches Pro can just push down your base and you cannot fight them, so you lose. It's that simple. Oh, Arrow? Ah, connects on nothing. That's a bit of a shame. Skylark gets stunned up. 
Ramsell's going in on that. They're actually kind of in an awkward spot. In the meantime, over here, we've got a roar on something. I don't really know. Pasha. He's diving in a little bit too deep. Arrow is going to connect, and it seems like Spartan is going to be able to get the Beastmaster. In the meantime, Juggernaut Ultimate used on OD. Next time, goes down. But Juggernaut, he is very low. <laughs> oh, God. Dunks him into the ground. Lil just making sure OD won't be doing anything in this fight. Skylark picked off as well. It's a 3 for 2 so far. Madara is still in it, but Madara is running out of mana very quickly, out of HP as well. I mean, he's got a double damage, but even with that double damage, he just can't do anything. And now the Juggernaut, who is looking reasonably healthy, is starting to push down the top. I mean, Juggernaut and Sniper, they both survived, and they're going to be taking down that tier 2. There's not really much that Advinam can do about it right now. Weaver, he still doesn't have he still doesn't have his uh, his, his desolator. Ooh, that's just really late, man. TP's back. Right into the juggernaut. Oh, well, that was risky. Uh meantime, Lil actually gets caught out by the Spartan. Mirana looking for something, but I don't think she can get that. No shaker is really tanky. I mean just naturally to begin with, but he also has a bunch of items. He almost got his Agonims on top of a Blink Dagger, Force Staff. That is a rich Earthshaker. <laughs> I mean, that Earthshaker is actually out farming three of the of the Radiant Heroes here. And one thing, you know, the Mirana has less money than the Ancient Apparition. That's that's also a bit of a problem. I mean, yeah, I guess she's got her. She's got her agonims, but the thing about Mirana is really like you want her to kind of turn into a semi-carry later on, right? You want her to become a hero that is actually actually able to take take at least somebody on on their own. Right, and right now I feel like if I send the Mirana even against the Shadow Demon, I'm I am i am not sure she wins that, right? Like I'm not saying the Shadow Demon will kill her, but I don't think she can kill him either, and that's a bit of a problem. Nook's sneaking about the place. Saving up a bunch of money, I assume, for buyback. He's pretty close. Desolate and all. Finally done on the Viva, but... I mean, this is really late. This is really, really late. Eagle song, so... Butterfly. As you would expect. Uh, at this point, you would expect either Butterfly or Scotty. Right? And I think both are perfectly fine choices. Um... Personally, I probably would have gone... Actually, no. No, 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 I like the butterfly more. No. No, I was gonna say that may have, maybe I would have gone for the for the Skadi, but I don't think so. I think the BKB keeps you perfectly safe this game. And um, I like the, the butterfly a lot more. So Roshan gonna be going down here. Um, Edges to the sniper, of course, who has got a Maelstrom on top of his BKB. Also cheese on the ground, and... Something else is incoming. Blink Dagger. <laughs> Blink Dagger for the Sniper. Just making sure he's got good positioning. I mean, Blink Dagger is just a fantastic item, isn't it? It's just really good. Really good. You, you, positioning is one of the most valuable things in the entire game. You're always going to make sure... Like, if you are in a good spot to fight, that's like 50% of the team fight right there. You know? Also, I don't know what's going on here. Probably because I skipped back a bunch of times, but... Oh well. Man, yeah, that's also a complete butterfly now. Wow. Yeah, Ramses is scary. Very, very scary. Alright. Yeah, just using those illusions. I, I, I think that's, that's a really, really cool combination, you know? Like, always the Shadow Demon with anybody that can get good use out of illusions. It's so scary. You're always being split pushed. You're always being attacked somewhere. It seems like there's never such a thing as a break. You just don't ever get that. And, uh, well. With this pro going top, looking to finish. Ice Blast comes out, connects on two. So that's really not too big of a deal. Solo. <laughs> Actually dropping pretty low here. He's just staying in the back, making sure he doesn't get hit by anything else. You know, you don't want to randomly die to something here. And uh, picking up some additional wards. Ooh, yeah, he, he, he got pretty low there. And the tower goes down. 
And again, they just have no need to actually go in themselves. Spartan blinks in. Uh, Blink Dagger is actually going to allow him to get some nice uh, Star Storms, but is that enough? Fuck, running in as well. Was actually looking to go for no one there. Just unfortunate timing. Look at those illusions. There goes the range barracks. Oh, they got an initiation. Skylark just goes down. The Omni Slash bouncing on fuck. Rams is in the middle. He's going to take down the OD. Maybe next time chopped up as well. Ramses on the retreat now. Two buybacks. Nux and OD looking for a little bit more. They don't want to give up just yet. But no one heating up. The AA is down. So no AA ultimate. And, and he can't buy back either. Oh, the dunk! The double dunk! Ramses picked off again! The Weaver falls. Did I just skip back? I think I just skipped back. Oops. But, sorry. Let's just skip ahead. <laughs> Oh no, alright, fuck, he goes down, he buys back. Well, at least we get to see the double dunk again. Arrow flies. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I really wish you could disable this power down here, I really wish you could. Alright. Oh no, Madara and uh, the OD, right on top of each other, you can't have that, you just can't. Madara even gets off the time lapse, but it just doesn't matter, everybody falls. Everybody goes down. That's just the Nyx assassin camping there. He doesn't have dispersion though. He doesn't have personal ultimate. The GG is called. The congrats comes out. And... Uh, Virtus Pro takes it. Boom! Okay, I don't... don't, don't God. Alright, 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 alright. Let's talk. So, I missed a bunch of kills in this cast, right? But it's really hard to get those if... um. If the they are so quick, right? Like every I feel like every kill that I miss happened in like two seconds, and I'm just like, oh my god, that is just too fast. <laughs> oh well. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating and also your usual feedback is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.